Hello, and welcome to this demo of the student view of the Career Eco Virtual Career Fair platform. This is the platform that we're going to be using for all of our upcoming events for this semester. So the information provided here is going to be helpful for any of our future events that are going to use this platform. So let's get started by looking at how to register for a fair. So to create an account, you're going to use your student email account. So for FSU students, that would be your at my.fsu.edu account. Um, but first, you're going to need to register as an individual um, because you don't have an account already created for you through the university. So go ahead and put that student email account here, um, put in your information, create a password, and then register. Since I've already registered um, my student email, I will go ahead and just log in already. Whenever you register for an event, you're going to then be prompted to create your profile. So it will look something like this. Whenever you're creating your profile, most of the information you're going to want to make sure it's the same information that you provide on your resume. So when looking at that, um, with this personal details, some of the information should already be filled in for you. Um, but again, any of this personal um, contact information, that should match whatever you have listed on your resume, just to make sure that you're not con potentially confusing the employers and what they see from your profile and what they see from your resume. I would definitely encourage you, if you have a LinkedIn, Instagram portfolio, to definitely include those URLs here. Um, if you have a LinkedIn, uh, put that URL. If it's an Instagram, just make sure that it is a professional Instagram that represents your best professional self. Um, and if you have a portfolio, amazing, go ahead and put that link here. If you don't have a portfolio yet, we do have a couple of options for you. You can visit the Career Center website and just search for portfolio. We have a pretty good portfolio system through our website that you can definitely use. We also have, um, as an FSU student, you have access to a to Portfolium, which is an online portfolio system um, through Canvas. And so um, you can also find instructions on how to access that and how to create your portfolio in Folio through Canvas on the Career Center's website. Um, the button down here is if you were planning on creating your profile um, and going through, but then you have to stop and you did not finish all of the information that you want in your profile, you can go ahead and make that private. So that way employers um, that are looking at students' profiles can't see your profile yet. I would just caution you to remember that you click that button and go back later, finish your profile and uncheck the button, just to make sure that employers are still able to view you before the career event. Um, because just like we're going to talk in a minute about going through and viewing employers before the fair, employers are going through and viewing you as students attending the fair. So you're going to want to make sure that your profile is completely up to date and viewable and visible for employers um, about a week ahead of, of the event. So as you go through, again, put your education information, make sure that it matches whatever you have in your resume. If you list multiple degrees in your resume, feel free to put those. Um, just make sure that you're being consistent. Now, whenever you're uploading your resume documents, um, you're going to want to upload those as PDF files. So here it says that you can upload them as a doc file or a PDF, but all of the documents will be converted to PDF anyway. So I would suggest that you just upload the documents as PDFs, so that way no formatting gets changed whenever Career Eco converts it to a PDF. Um, because that can sometimes happen. So go ahead and upload your resume and cover letter um, as a PDF. You don't need to upload a reference letter or transcript unless a company that you're interested in specifically says that they want those items in your um, profile. Um, I don't imagine many employers will ask for that, so don't worry about needing to put those documents. I would say if you have your resume and your cover letter, those are gonna be good. You can also upload multiple resumes and cover letters. Um, I would suggest just having one copy of each um, and make them generalized. So for career fairs, you can have a generalized resume and cover letter that you give to any employer that just shows your general skills and experiences. Um, if you then go and apply for a specific position that the company has, that's when you would maybe tailor your documents to that specific company in that specific position. Um, but for a career fair like this, having a general resume and a general cover letter would definitely be okay. 
if you do want to have multiple uh, documents, you can always set one as your default document here as well. All right. Um, and if you do want um, your resume or cover letter reviewed or critiqued by the Career Center before the fair, you can visit the Career Center website or go to our virtual drop in advising via Zoom. Um, and our career advisors are going to be more than happy to look at those documents and review them for you. Again, we talked about portfolio before. You can definitely put that URL here. And then email preferences, I do want to note that this is your preferences for receiving emails from the career ecosystem, not your preferences for employers to contact you. So whenever you go through, um, this is going to be more about messages from the career ecosystem. So that's something to keep in mind. So once you're done setting up your profile, you're then going to be able to register for events. So you can see here, I'm already registered for our STEM career and internship fair coming up on the 22nd. Um, so I'm going to show you how to register for an event by using our Seminole Futures career and internship fair. So to do that, you will go to upcoming events. And then here at the top, it's going to automatically have selected all fairs you're going to want to click career fairs because that will help narrow down the options that they provide you. You're then going to scroll down to either the STEM career and internship fair or the Seminole Futures Fair. These are in order of date. So the, Sim, so the STEM fair, which I've already registered for, so it's not here in the list, that's going to be on September 22nd. And then the Seminole Futures Fair is September 24th. So you can find them here in this list. Whenever you go to um, beforehand, if you wanted to look um, at what employers were going to be at the fair before deciding if you wanted to attend or not, you can always do that by clicking event details. And that will have a list of all of the employers that are going to be at the fair. If you find a few that you're like, yes, this is definitely going to be beneficial for me, then definitely register for the fair by hitting that register now button. So going through and registering for the fair you're going to have to go through a couple different questions. So for work authorization, it asks if you're legally eligible for employment within the US, and then will you now or in the future require visa sponsorship? If either of those apply to you, you're definitely going to want to make sure um, that you either speak with uh, the Center for Global Engagement or the GLOBE, um, or maybe uh, if you're here on an international um, work study or something like that, that you just talk with whoever you need to talk to to make sure that you're going to be able to get the internships or the employment that you're looking for. Then there's a couple I acknowledge statements that you're going to read and click. And then enter your FSU ID. And then you'll select what year you are, it should populate this contact information from your profile already. Are you willing to relocate? Yes, no, maybe, something to think about, and then complete registration. Awesome. So now you'll see, once I've registered for the fair, it's going to appear in my events. And now whenever you log into Career Eco, these events will appear in your home screen uh, right away. So very easy to find. So now we're going to look more um, at this event details. Um, like I said before, you can find which employers are going to be at the fairs and some general information about what kind of majors they're looking for, what positions they're offering here. We're going to deep dive into this in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to look at this chat now button. Um, because I think the chat feature is going to be the feature that's used most frequently at the fair itself. So um, looking at the chat feature, you can see all of the companies that are going to be at the event and then the topic of their room. Most of this, they're just going to put their company name again or um, what kind of positions they're hiring for. Um, so that topic is going to be there. And then you can see their status. So on the day of the fair, most of these should say online. If an employer maybe is taking a lunch break or something, they'll show us offline. So that's something to see as well. And then it'll list their chat times for the day. So right now it doesn't show anything, but on the day of the event, you can see all the different times that each employer will be available to chat. So 
Um, scroll, oh, sorry, another thing you're going to want to note is that all of the times are going to be displayed in Eastern time. So because this is a virtual fair, you may not be within Eastern time zone. So just make sure that you're being very conscious of the time zone and the time considerations whenever you're looking at chatting with an employer. So I'm going to go through and show you the FSU Career Center's chat page. Um, so this is going to be a chat with the FSU Career Center. We are not hiring for any positions, but we will have staff here if you have any questions um, about how to use Career Eco, about the fair. If you want to talk through how to approach an employer because you're feeling a little nervous, we're definitely here for you and available to chat. Um, so I'm going to use this chat room to kind of demo what the main chat room of an employer's chat might look like for you. So um, whenever you click on the chat button, it'll take you to the main chat room of that employer's organization. Think of the main chat room as kind of like the booth that you would walk up to at an in-person career fair. So there's going to be a table with lots of recruiters from that company, and there might be a lot of students all kind of gathered around that table talking with recruiters. That's what this main chat room is kind of like, that main table. Um, there may be some pamphlets on the table that they hand you and ask you to look over as you're waiting to speak with a recruiter. And that can be found over here at this top left corner. So you can see the company's profile, which you can kind of click on and see a little bit more information. You should have already done all of your research on the company before joining the chat, but this is a great place if you just wanted to review some information about them as you're waiting. Um, and I do want to point out that in the Career Center's profile, we do have some Career Eco tutorial links here for you. So definitely feel free to check those out and get comfortable with Career Eco. But there's also this Files button. And some of our employers may have you look over an infographic that they have about summer opportunities or their company or positions that they're hiring for. So this is where that would be located. I also want to draw your attention to this top blue bar up here. This is going to be where the welcome message is for that organization. So some of our employers may have instructions for you in this welcome message about, you know, hey, check out our infographic for summer internship opportunities or our leadership development program. Um, where they might have you look over their website and come prepared for an individual chat with a recruiter. Uh, with questions already. They may be providing questions up here for you to think about um, to start that conversation with the recruiter. So definitely you want to check out this blue bar and see if the company has any um, requests that they ask you to do while you're waiting. The next thing you're going to want to do is look at the um, chat. So during the day of the career fair, there's going to be a list of the history of the chat room. So you're going to want to take some time to scroll through that chat and review any questions that have already been asked and the answers to those questions, because you don't want to ask a question that's already been asked before um, if it's able to be easily found in that chat history. Now, if you're scrolling through the chat history and you're not seeing a particular question that you want to ask, definitely go ahead and ask that question. Um, if it's more of a general question. If it's a more specific nuanced question, I would wait for your one-on-one -on -one conversation with a recruiter. So here in the chat, you can give your general like welcome message um, to the organization. So if you wanted to say, hello, um, my name is Connor and I'm excited to speak with a recruiter once you are available something like that. You will notice that as you're going ahead before the uh, fair itself and you're going through and looking at employers, if you were to get into an employer's chat room and try to message them, you'd get a little message that says there's no moderators online. So you cannot message employers before the day of the event. But during the event, this is where you would do that. Now, I would suggest, because you're probably already figuring that you're probably going to be giving the same information over and over. Your welcome message is probably going to be very similar. Um, and a lot of recruiters ask the same kinds of questions to start off with, you know, um, your elevator pitch, telling the employer a little bit about yourself, um, talking about previous leadership experiences or what positions you're interested in. Those are common questions from recruiters. So I would suggest having a Word document pulled up that has your responses to those general questions already typed up. So that way you can just copy and paste them into the chat instead of having to type them out each time. 
So while you're waiting in the main chat room, recruiters are going to be having private conversations in private chat rooms with individual students. So as you're waiting, a recruiter will then invite you to the, their private chat room. I can't demo that for you now because we don't have um, any recruiters in this chat room. But the private chat room is going to look very similar to this, but it's just going to be you and that one recruiter. Many of our recruiters are excited to use the um, video audio feature for the um, private chats. Um, so again, unfortunately, I cannot demo that for you now, but up here in this upper right corner, kind of by where the exit room button is going to be, there should be a button there that says broadcast media. You're going to select that broadcast media button and then select broadcast video and audio. And then that should show um, your video and audio very similar to Zoom or FaceTime or another video conferencing system that you might be familiar with. If you can't broadcast your video and audio, just let the recruiter know and you can use the text chat feature um, to talk back and forth. We've let our recruiters know that not all students are going to be able um, to use the video feature and they're aware of that and they're not expecting you to be able to do that. Just know that if you are able to, that's going to be a nice feature to use in that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a recruiter. Whenever you're done with your private conversation with a recruiter, which typically lasts no longer than maybe three to five minutes, they're very brief because the recruiter is wanting to talk to as many students as possible. Um, so keep that conversation brief. Whenever you're done, um, the recruiter will close that private chat and you're going to go back to this main chat room. You can either stay in the main chat or you can then exit the room here, get back to the general list and look for the next company that you're wanting to talk with. So now that's kind of how the day of the fair is going to work, but let's take some time to talk about how to prepare for the fair ahead of time. So again, if you go to um, your main list of your events and then you click on event details and again event details. This is where that list of employers are who are going to be at the event. From here, you can use the filters to then filter organizations based on your demographics. So you can put your major here and the degree that you have or that you're looking to get. Um, and then the kinds of positions you're looking for. So with the filters, for some of the questions, you're definitely going to want to be more specific to get the positions you're looking for, like put your major, put your degree. For positions, this is where just going narrow, so if I were to just put an internship and that is it, that's only going to give me a limited amount of options. The more options I'm open to, the more companies I might be able to see as well as location. If I am just put that I'm interested in Florida, I'm probably not going to get that many. You can see there's already only three companies that fit this criteria. The more locations I put, the more companies I'll be able to see. So from here, um, you can see kind of the general information about the employers. So their organization, the majors they're looking for, the positions that they're offering, and the locations of those positions based on your filtering criteria. So if you see one that catches your eye, let's look at maybe Federal Credit Union. You can now see a lot more detail about that organization and their profile. So again, up here at the top, you can go and visit their website. Some of them may provide a link to the specific careers website that they have that will talk about career opportunities um, and positions that they have opened. You can definitely visit those websites. Um, and companies will also provide a little bit of information about their organization. You'll also be able to see the job offerings that they have. So all of our employers should have jobs posted in Knoll Network for you, um, or maybe on their own recruitment website that you can then go and look at um, and see if you qualify for that job, if it's something that's interesting to you. Um, and I would say as you're looking through these jobs and through these employers, you're going to want to keep um, track of the notes on the, the company. So I would suggest either having a Word doc or Google doc, or maybe you're more of a spreadsheet, you know, Google Sheets, Excel kind of person, or maybe you just like having a notebook that you take notes on about the different companies. Whatever your organization system is, you're going to want to make sure that you keep track of each employer the, com the jobs that they're having, questions that you might have to bring up with a recruiter, things that excite you about that company or that excite you about the position, those are going to be good to have in your conversation with a recruiter. 
They're also going to list their chat times. So Navy Federal doesn't have any chat times listed yet, but don't worry. All of our employers that are in the system are going to be at the fair. Um, they just may be still working out what times they're gonna be available, um, or they may have just not posted those chat times in Career Eco yet. So don't be discouraged if you see an employer that doesn't have any chat times. And then it'll go through and list the information that we saw on that main page, just in a little bit more detail. And then finally, it'll have their website again, and then any potential contact information. So if they have a specific contact that's going to be at the event, um, or maybe they'll list different contacts for different types of positions that they're offering. So if it's internships, it might be one person. If it's full-time jobs, it might be another. Um, this is where you can find that information. And then, um, you'll go through and if you find a company that you're like, yes, I'm definitely interested in that company, you can click this checkbox here that says interest and that will let the organization know that you're interested in speaking with them and that you're interested in learning more. Um, so if you are interested in an employer, that's a really great way to get on their radar because just like you're going through and filtering and finding companies that you're interested in, our employers are going through the students that have registered for the fairs and they're going through and filtering and looking for students that they might be interested in speaking with. So that's a great way to get on an employer's radar. I would not recommend just marking several organizations, like you filter criteria and then you go through and check every single organization that meets your criteria without doing the research on that organization, just because you wanna cast a broad net or get as many people interested in you as possible. Um, just because if you do get into that private conversation with the recruiter and they see that you marked them as interested, they're likely going to ask you about it and say, what interests you about our company? Um, and you need to have a solid personalized response for that company prepared. You don't want to give just a general response like, oh, when I was filtering companies, your company met all of my criteria. Um, you want to be able to show that you did the research on the company and found something that really interested you about them. So just a little caution about the interest button there. Um, on the day of the fair, you can also directly access their chat room from this page if you want to brush up on the organization before entering the chat. So let's say, again, you know that you were interested in Navy Federal, but and you have your notes sheet prepared, but you wanted to just look over their information one last time before joining their chat room. You can do that here and then click the chat now button and that will take you directly to their chat room. So that's another way to access. I would suggest not waiting until the day of the fair to do your research on the organizations though. Have about five to seven organizations prepared ahead of time that you know that you wanna to talk to. Um, so that way you're coming into the day of the fair already knowing what organizations to visit and you're just using this as a chance to just brush up on that information before you start chatting with them. So again, before the fair, another thing you're going to want to do is just get familiar with the career ecosystem. Play around in career eco ahead of time, get familiar with the features. Again, you can visit um, that FSU Career Center chat room and just kind of play around. You're not going to be able to send any chats. Um, here you go. You're not going to be able to send any chats, but it's definitely a way um, to just kind of get familiar with what the chat room is going to look like and all of the different buttons that might be uh, available to you. Um, something, again, like I mentioned before, if you look at the Career Center's profile, here at the bottom, we do have links to tutorial videos, PDFs of slides. Um, so reviewing this information is going to be very helpful for you. Um, also, if you go to our contact information here, uh, this hire a knoll at fsu.edu email is going to be a good email address if you have any questions that you can reach out and ask us. Another thing you're going to want to do is get organized. Like I mentioned before, review employers ahead of time and take notes. Whatever organization system works for you, that is great. Just make sure you have some sort of way to navigate the career fair and have those notes ahead of time. You're also gonna to wanna to find a quiet place to attend the fair. This is still a professional event, and so you're going to wanna to make sure that you're in a space where you can concentrate. Wear professional business attire, or at least the top half, um, and because employers are going to wanna to try to use that video conferencing feature in the private chats if possible. So make sure that you're presenting yourself professionally, um, or as you would wanna be presented with an employer. 
um, and make sure that your background is appropriate as well. I recommend having just a solid blank wall behind you, or at least have a wall with minimal distractions in the background. There are open spaces on campus for you to have a private space. So Strozier and Dirac libraries are open for students to have video calls, but there are no private study rooms open. So that might be a little bit louder than what you might be looking for. You can also reserve private study rooms in the Innovation Hub and Thagard, um, but those are reservations ahead of time. So you're going to wanna look into those options and try to reserve a space because they might fill up quickly on the day of the fair. And lastly, if you have any questions as you're preparing for the fair, definitely feel free to reach out, visit our website, drop into our virtual advising Monday to Friday, uh, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And you can speak with a career advisor about how to best prepare for the fair, review your resume, answer any questions. Um, and always, again, this email address here, hirenoll at fsu.edu. You can email us there and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Best of luck with preparing for the fair. This is going to be a, a great virtual opportunity to meet with employers and still connect and get those internships and jobs that you're looking for. And we are here to help you every step of the way. Definitely reach out if you need anything.